Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Amazing God, amazing Father. What a joy, what a comfort to know that we are serving the living God, the creator of heaven and earth. We are not serving a man or an organization or religion or fabrication of some, of some kind. We are serving the true and living God. We are in love with Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God. We are serving the amazing and walking with the amazing Holy Spirit every day. What a joy to know that uh, through the thick and thin, through hills and valleys, through the night and darkness, through the day and night, good times, bad times, our Father is with us, our God is in us, is with us, and is guiding us every step of the way. He is our light. He is our hope. He is our confidence. Hallelujah. My mouth overflows with thanksgiving and appreciation to the one and only true God, our Father, who in all his mercies has brought you and I through a year like 2021. Since 2020, we have seen things change, everything shaken, oh, and all things are fulfilling the word of God, God's eternal word. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of our God will never pass away. So what is happening in the world doesn't scare us, doesn't you know, embarrass us. We, we, we know we've been reading this in the Bible. We've been preaching them. We've been believing them. We are now seeing the Bible become alive every day. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Most High. Well, welcome to the year 2022. Praise God. Yes, you made it. It is no more 2021. It's now 2022. Come on. Tell yourself, hey, I am in 2022. Some of you can't even imagine how you made it across to this year 2022. And the Bible says, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat and winter, Sowing and reaping will never come to an end. Any day woke up in the morning, you are alive that day. Hey, is a time to say thanks be to God, the maker of heaven and earth. So welcome to 2022. It's a new year. It's a new day. It's a new time. And we in this 2022 must carefully, closely, but joyfully and expectantly look into God's blue book the book of his plan. There is a book written called 2022, before the throne of God. Now, almost every firm, every nation, every city and uh, uh, industries or firms or whatever, they all have their agenda for 2022. So also is God. So also is the kingdom of heaven. God have a year 2022. He has all that is in his plan that he intend to bring into this world, to accomplish in this world, in this generation, in the city, in the nation, in the continent, in the individual, in the family. So God have his own agenda for 2022. Now, everybody have their own agenda. Cities, nations, families, churches, ministries, governments, authorities, institutions, they all have their own agenda for 2022, but God also have his own. So which agenda will prevail? In 2022, I might as well know which one will prevail. For sure you know that God's agenda is the one that will prevail in 2022. I know your plans may be fantastic. They may be wonderful. They may be something, you oh know, this is it. This is it. This is my decision. This is what I want to pursue and follow. Wow. Great, wonderful, but may it be that your agenda, your plan for 2022 falls in line with the divine agenda for 2022. And that's my prayer, that's my cry, that's my desire, that's why I'm seeking the Lord. I, I don't want anything about me or my plan or whatever to conflict with his own plan and agenda. 
But when his own plan and agenda is, is what is also in my own plan and agenda, wow, then I and God then can what? Can walk together. Praise the Lord. And this is the year to walk with the Lord. Not to walk for God, but to walk with God, to follow his own agenda. God said, as heaven is above the earth, so are my ways above your ways. So are my thoughts above your thoughts. God have his own agenda. Read the Bible. Read the book of the prophecies. See the teachings and the principles of Christ for the end time. Right there in the book of the beginning, the Bible says, and, and the first day, God said, let there be light. Second day, third day, fourth day. So God have his agenda for every day, for every year, for every generation, for every century. He has his own plan and agenda. And man's agenda, man's plan, the nations, the devils, they will all be destroyed by God's own agenda. So, if you and I want to walk with God in 2022, we must humbly, sincerely say, God, I am willing with all my heart to let go of my own agenda and plans and totally, completely walk in your own plan and agenda. Because the Bible says, God make all things work together for our good. To those who are called according to his purpose, those who love God. So as long as you and I are following God's agenda for 2022, we cannot be wrong. And we will have all the grace we need to accomplish his agenda. You and I, we are part of God's agenda. To see us strengthened, to see us fulfilled, to see us strong and joyful is part of the divine agenda for 2022. To see your prayers answered, which are prayed in line with his will, is part of the heaven's agenda in 2022. So God's agenda and our desire must totally, completely melt into one. As the Lord Jesus prays, say, Lord God, my Father, not my will, but your will be done in 2022. Now, if you can pray that prayer with all your heart, with all sincerity, and desiringly desire to do that, which is the will of God in 2022, I am telling you, you will arrive, you will end this year strong and blessed and prosperous. I can guarantee you that. But if you pursue your own agenda, oh, and if your agenda comes into with God's agenda, well, when the strong hit meet the weak, some then have to give up. And it's not God giving up. It is our own thing that have to bow to his greater plan and purpose. But I pray for you and I pray for myself and I pray for our sons and daughters and our children that the Almighty God might melt our heart into his. That would totally, completely find fulfillment and joy in the divine agenda for 2022. You know, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, he said, God rested on the seventh day. When God met man on the sixth day, on the seventh day, God what? Rested. He rested from all his work. And God has called you and I into rest. That's why man was made on the sixth day. He opened his eyes. It was a Sabbath day. And so he, God wanted somebody to enter into rest to it. The work has been finished from the foundation of the world. And so when you and I, Abandon our own work and submit ourselves to God's work and plan and agenda. We enter into the finished work. It is finished. All I need to know is what is God's plan and agenda for 2022. And I melt myself into it. I enter into rest. So I don't have to struggle and say, oh, what can I do? What should I do? How should I go? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, I don't know. No, 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 no. Confusion is over. I follow the divine agenda for 2022. In that divine agenda and plan is our total and complete security and providence. Say with me, security and providence. This is how godly men in the times past walked. They sought after God. The Lord Jesus said, I can of my own self do nothing. Can you imagine Jesus? 
I have no agenda of my own. What I see my father do, that's what I do also. Oh. So he walked in rest. He only followed God's agenda. That's why he said, I can't, the words I speak are not even mine. I have no plan of my own. I submit myself to the divine program. And that's rest. That's rest. I don't want to be where God doesn't want me to live to. I don't want to do what he didn't plan that I should do. No, I don't. That, there's, no, there's, no, there's no security in that. And there's no providence in that. That is work. But when I enter into what he has already prepared, Jesus said, I have chosen you and ordained you. I already prepared the way you should walk in. I already prepared everything. I, I know you and I choose you before the world was made. <laughs> and I already put everything in place that you should walk in. Christ came to earth to accomplish, to fulfill the book that was written concerning him. It was already written. He didn't come to say, okay, huh? what should I do? How, what do you think? How do I think? No, 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 no. He was following the divine plan. And he fulfilled it with joy. And I pray and believe that this 2022 will be the year of your great rest. You say rest? Pastor, you mean what you mean? I say, I'm telling you, you can have the greatest year of rest this year. I, I'm living in rest. I, I'm not restless. Do you look at me as someone who's restless? I'm not restless. I am restless when I follow my own plan and agenda. I get into trouble. But when I walk in the divine rest, in what the almighty God has already ordained and prepared I should walk in before the world was made. That's where I have security. That's where I have providence. And that's where I have victory over the enemy. Don't try to create a work for yourself. Wow. This year can be the greatest year. I was, I was in, um, I, I, as you know, I went to uh, Cameroon to the Fugos Missions uh, um, Diamond Jubilee, six years of the Fugos Missions in Cameroon. I just came back from there. Uh, I came back on, you know, and then um, uh, I was invited to speak in the con convention, which is the, Jub the Diamond Jubilee, uh, as my home church there in Cameroon. It's where, uh, when I got saved, the Lord sent me there, and he, that's where He prepared me. And that's where He sent from there, He sent me out here. And so, and while I was coming back, I had a little stay in, uh, in, uh, in Brussels, and I had a, quite some hours of, of a lay, layover there. So I was in, in the hotel room there by the airport. And while I was there in the airport sleeping and resting, the Lord produced into my spirit. And in that's Acts chapter 9, and verse, uh, and verse 31 says, Then had the churches rest. Say with me then, had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria. Not just in one city, not just in, one, in two places, but in Judea, in Galilee and Samaria. And we are edified. We are edified. That word, the edified, mere, they were strengthened, they were empowered, they were confirmed, they were built up, they were emboldened. Wow. Then, I just rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and we are edified and walking, conducting their lives. Conducting the activities in the fear of the Lord. In the fear of the Lord. And that word their fear means that they did not want to miss God in any way, in anything. Because they know that missing God's plan and purpose and directions in anything will become you losing your protection and losing your providence. So they were walking in the fear of God. What does it mean to walk in the fear of God? It means I don't want 
my own way. My own way, my own plan will be disaster. It will be chaos. It will be given a chance to my enemy. It will be given the enemy an advantage over me. So I don't want to miss God. I want to totally, completely follow what God wants. Number one, because I love him. Number two, because only his will and plan will stand. Number three, because I want to live my life in the rest, which God has already ordained for me. When I walk in his plan and purpose and rest, then I, have, I don't waste my energy doing something or building something that tomorrow will be destroyed. That doesn't fit into the divine plan and order. You know, it's like you building a house in the wrong way in the airport. It will be demolished. It's, it's the structure is out of order. It's not in line with the, with the city plan. It's not in line with the plan of the kingdom of God. So you, 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 you gonna, it's going to be destroyed. So I, I, I walk in the fear of God. Lord, I pray for myself and for those who are listening to this message today. That we might have that heart, that mind, that thought, that attitude of the heart to walk in the fear of God. Lord God, I don't want to miss you. I don't want to go my own way. I don't know what is going to happen. So my security is walking in what God has already ordained and planned for this year. Following his plan, when God called Moses, he told Moses, listen, Moses, when you are building the tabernacle, make sure you build it at according to the pattern, strictly to the pattern I showed you on the mount. He took Moses up to the mount and showed him the vision, the picture of the, of the heavenly tabernacle. And he said, okay, now you go back and duplicate the exact thing, the measurement, the sizes, the colors, the materials, everything exactly as it was shown to you on the mount. Now, don't go now and say, hey, let's, hey, Dickens, come. Hey, elders, come. What do you think? What do you think about 2022? What do we do? How are we going to do it? Right. <laughs> That's Deacon Church. That's Elders Church. That's not Church of God. No. God told Moses, make sure you build everything according to the pattern shown to you on the mount. And so the Bible said, the church, we are walking in the fear of God. And uh, 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 look at chapter, let me read that for you then, chapter 25, Exodus, verse uh, 20, uh, verse uh, 25, verse, five, verse 9 of the book of Exodus. And it says here, and, uh, and it says, uh, 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 verse 8, says, let them make a, a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, according to all that I should be, after the pattern of the tabernacle, and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it exactly it says don't you go follow your own plan and call the elders and call everybody and say hey what do you think he said no and in fact in verse 40 of the same chapter of exodus 25 he says here and look that thou make them after their pattern which was showed thee on the mount <laughs> you are to duplicate it as it was shown to you don't bring your ideas to this. Don't bring your plan into this. Don't bring your PhD to this. And I'm not against PhDs. I know some of you think, you know, we don't know what to do. That's why we are following Christ and hiding behind God. Thank God I'm hiding behind God. I don't want to hide behind your ideas. I hide behind Jesus. It's better for me than hiding behind your ideas. He said, look, that thou make them after the pardon which was shewed thee in the mount. So God, the leaders, elders, pastors, should seek after God so he can direct us so we can follow the exact pattern of what God have ordained for you and I in 2024 and 2022. And if we can do that, we can be sure that God will guarantee it and defend it and protect it and preserve it. Not just in the things of church or ministry, but in our own personal life, in our own personal plan and decisions and choices. In our own personal family things, in the future of our children. We should pray that they follow the plan that God has for their lives. Man, life is too precious to be left to accident. Life is not, a, 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 you know, a, a, an accident. Life is a planned thing. 
Follow the life of Jesus. He, has, he said, I have come in the volume of the book is written of me. I come to fulfill that which is ordained of God. It's not only Christ only that God has a plan for. Before I came here as a missionary, the Lord showed me the ministry. Showed me even though it's going to be the men people going to surround me in the beginnings of the ministry. There is no confusion in God. God's kingdom is a planned kingdom. There's no confusion in the plan of God. And so here we read again, chapter 9 of the book of Acts, and it says in verse, um, in verse 31, Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and we edified, walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, we are multiplied. Wow! What happened? Saul of Tarsus had terrorized, terrorized the church for quite some time. He was a part of the gang that killed Stephen, the first Christian martyr, and created chaos. The church was scattered everywhere. And he was on his way to, to Damascus to arrest Christians and to kill them and to cause them to blaspheme, to destroy them, to abandon their faith. And close to that gate of Damascus, he encountered the eternal light. Christ is the light. The light of Christ struck him down. He came in encounter with light. And I am praying for you today. If you are out there plotting and planning and intending the evil you do against Christians, how you persecute them, how you do this and that, I pray in 2022, you Saul of Tarsus, you agent of darkness, the light of Christ will strike you down in Jesus' name. And this gospel and this preacher, this Christians that you hate, you become one of them. And you will be, you will suffer for Christ for all the evil you've done against Christ and his people. The light of Christ will strike down many people in the high places in 2022. They will come running to the church. The light of Christ will strike many down who hate Christ, who hate the cause of Christ, who hate Christians, who are trying to persecute Christians in, in strange lands, in strange nations. This is your year, 2022. The light, you will encounter the light of Christ. Christ will attack you with his light. And there will be strange conversions in high places in 2022. So finally, this soul of Tarsus, the, the biggest enemy of the Christians in that time, was encounter the light of Christ and become the apostle Paul. And so all that persecution and chaos he was creating came to an end. And the churches had rest. And I'm praying and I'm believing God that in 2022, many of the Christians who have stood their ground for Christ, who have humbly walked with God in this very dark time and chaotic times, humbly, without, without becoming an extreme in one side. Uh, uh, I am anti that, I am that, no, 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 or oh, I'm for this, no, no, but have stayed in the middle of the road and walked humbly with God. I believe God will bring in extraordinary rest to many who, in the midst of this whole chaos, where many people are deserting and backsliding and forming all kinds of, you know, ideological blocks, you've humbly stayed in the middle of the road. Christ will bring supernatural rest into your life. And the churches had rest. Rest by abandoning their own plan and purpose. By stopping to try to build their own kingdom. And allow God by becoming flexible in God's hand. So that God can move them wherever he wants. However he wants. To use them however he wants. Not just in my ministry, my church, my, my, my. No, no, no. You, you let yourself be open and ready and flexible. So God can direct you, lead you, help you walk in the way he wants you to walk. In obedience to his order and plan in the church. Under authority. Under the divine plan. Under the divine covering of the local church and authorities. Not just in your own independent way, mindedness. And at last, the church had rest. Not just from persecution, but from their own plans. They were now willing and ready for God's agenda and plan and purpose. And so the church had rest. And we are edified, walking in the fear of God, in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, we are 
multiplied. That's my prayer for 2022, that many of us will abandon our own works and enter into the divine rest and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us into what God has ordained. The things God have ordained for those who love him. I have not seen, ear have not heard, and I have not heard a man. What God have prepared for those who, who, who love him in 2022. While the war is going, hell, wire, chaos, and confusion, we can walk in divine rest. In divine purpose and plan and ordering and timing. Thinking his thoughts after him. Speaking his words after him. Yielding ourselves to his love and power and presence. Being ready and focused on the king and his kingdom. Being willing to totally, completely make the sacrifice we need to make. To see his kingdom come and his will done on earth as it is done in heaven. It is time to be focused. It is time to let Christ have his way. It is time to walk in union with the Holy Spirit. And you will see that the light of God's presence, one side of it will be darkness to the people in the world. But the other side, it will be light to those of us who are following in his plan and agenda. To the world, there will be thick darkness. But to those who are walking in the light of Christ, who will have light. Just as the angel of God came between the Egyptians and the, and the Jewish nation in the midst of the Red Sea. To one side, it was darkness. To the other side, it was light. It will give us light. It will give them darkness to protect them from coming too closer to crush the church, which is the agenda of darkness. God will stand in the middle between the church and the world to hinder their evil satanic agenda against the body of Christ in 2022. Be comforted, be strengthened, be empowered, and enter into divine rest in 2022. And the Holy Ghost breathe into your innermost being quietness and assurance and confidence and you have that helmet of salvation which is hope expecting god to order all things for you and in you and through you in 2022 and you end up saying wow what a year we thank god for 2021 but i believe god 2022 will be a year of great rest for those who know how to walk in divine plan and purpose. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Thank you, Lord.